old age is about harvesting whatever your life's work has been. And this has been my life's work. And it it's, it's, um, continues to be poetry. 50 years after the first publication, this is harvest time. And the thousand or so poems I've written over, over the years, going back half a century, these are the ones that I'm wanting to keep. And I, I want to thank David and Stephen and Marty and acknowledge the many poets, the many wonderful, gifted, inspiring people and the ocean and Colleen for her hospitality. And I took just brief, I mean, I see T T T Mike Walker here is a fantastic poet. And uh, I see Nick Herbert back there. And my, my <laughs> and, and Stephen. I I should be sitting down there on the beach. These other people are. <laughs> I'm going to start with a poem for Gloria, because she has been. She has been my my, my muse. And I, I want to say that this that I, this has taken a life of its own. Uh, you're, you're all being here today. It was going to be a, a group of uh, Colleen's students, and then just a few friends, and then it just, you know, began to grow. So. My muse begins with, uh, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. As a rule, the power of absolutely falling in love soon vanishes because the woman feels embarrassed by the spell she exercises over her poet lover and repudiates it. That's the quote from Robert Graves' The White Goddess. And this is for my muse. Why don't you just write a poem right now, she says. Western wind, when wilt thou blow? Why don't you write a poem like that, like that anonymous, something inspirational? Talk about muses. Yeats' wife was visited in her dreams by angels I sulk. Angels have said, we have come to bring you images for your husband's poetry. Yeah, so what, she says. It's out of style. I already do too much for you. <laughs> <laughs> Odalesque in a wicker chair, book open on her lap, dry white Chardonnay at her side, hand on a dozing, bewhiskered sphinx. You need a muse, she says, someone beautiful, mysterious, some long-lost love, fragile, a dancer perhaps. Look at me. Yeah, I say, refilling their glass. You hear me complaining? You're zoftig. Zoftig? Firm? Earthy? Juicy, too, I say. Luscious, provocative, sensual, daring. Juicy plum, I say, in bed, left hand over her head. Rose petals, I say, right arm around her. Silver drop earrings, I murmur, ordering out for gifts. Aubergine scarf, gray cashmere cardigan. I do this in my sleep. Go shopping in my sleep. Oh yeah, in a case of Chardonnay. Wake to the scent of rose blossoms. Decades in the glow of rose light. Wake, she whispers. I tell her my dream. We kiss. Poppy Express. Racy red. Red coral. Star red. Red red. Enough. That's enough, she says. <laughs> always looking for inspiration and uh, for one of Gloria's birthdays <laughs> um, I <laughs> look up the word love in the dictionary looking for inspiration what is it what is it what is the meaning of love so this is for Gloria on her birthday or looking for love in Merriam-Webster beautiful Splendid, magnificent, delightful, charming, appealing, says the dictionary. And that's how I start. But I hear her say, make it less glorious and more Gloria. <laughs> Imperious, composed, skeptical, serene, lustrous, irreverent. She's marked by glory. She attracts glory. Glory, I say. Glory. Glory. Is there a hallelujah in there, she asks. <laughs> When a reader lines one and two, not yet, I say, looking up from my books. She protests, writing a poem isn't the same as really attending to me. But it's for your birthday, I say, pouting playfully across. That's the price you pay when you love the poet. She has chestnut-colored hair, 
old-fashioned clarable lips, moist brown eyes, arms outstretched, head thrown back, she glides toward me and into her seventh decade. Her name means to adore, to rejoice, to be jubilant, to magnify and honor as in worship, to give or, or ascribe glory. I'll that line again. To magnify and honor as in worship, to give or ascribe glory. My love, O oh Gloria, I do, I do. It's a privilege living here. I, mean, I, I, uh, my, my, I have a new mantra. And the, the new mantra is thank you. 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 This is Ode to Santa Cruz. For Sandy Light, a couple lines of this uh, I adapt from, from Sandy. You want a sunrise? asked the poet. I'll give you a sunrise. Eggplant, cirrus clouds, pinky, smoky, blue and gray, pink, moss pink, pink nether flower. Sunrise, sunrise, yellow, white, silicon chip, foghorn, wind chime, no color haze. Sunrise, sunrise. Oh, city of mystical arts and live soup. Antique bathhouse, casino, Riva fish house. A busload of tourists applauding the sunrise. Clam shotter, oh scrub blue light, melon balls and watermelon shooters, arcade, pink neon, roller coaster, heart shaped mirror, kaboom, house begins to dance, land moves in waves three and four feet high, weight machines swaying, mirrors rattling, a sidewalk of broken glass, a street filled with jewels, Loma Prieta, the earthquake of the dark hill, place, this place always coming back from a disaster natural beauty and unnatural events. Jazz, blues, canoes, tattoos. I bow and give thanks to the muse, Santa Cruz. Oh, Santa Cruz. <laughs> I, I'm going to read the, the uh, Uncle Dog poem. This is a birthday for, for the book. It's, it's, a, it, it's a celebration of um, living here for 25 years, you know, and the, and the privilege of all of this. And um, this is the Uncle Dog poem, The Poet at Nine. I did not want to be old Mr. Garbage Man, but Uncle Dog, who rode sitting beside him, Uncle Dog had always looked to me to be truck strong, wise-eyed, a cur-like Ford of a dog. I did not want to be Mr. Garbage Man because all he had was cans to do. Uncle Dog sat there, me beside him, emptying nothing, barely even looking from garbage side to side, like rich people in the back seats of chauffeur cars, only shaggy in an unwagging, tall, scrawny way. Uncle Dog belonged any just where he sat, but old Mr. Garbage Man had to shop, had to stop at every single can. I thought I didn't want to be Mr. Everybody calls him that first. A dog is said, dog, or by name. I would rather be called Rover than Mr. and sit like a tough, smart mongrel beside a garbage man. Uncle Dog always went to places unconcerned, without no hurry, independent like some leashless toot, honorable among scavenger can-picking dogs, and with the bitch in every other can, and meet his for the barking. Oh, I wanted to be Uncle Dog, sharp, high, fox-eared, curved forward, truck-faced, with his pick of the bones. A doing truckman's dog, and not a simple child dog, nor friend to man, but an uncle, traveling into himself, and a bitch at every second can. <laughs> This is a tough one. This is, uh, years later, this is a, a piece called Give Me Your Paw. And the dog is the, is the speaker here. And, uh, we're coming up to my birthday. I'm 77. 23 more and I'll be 100. So what's it all about? 60 odd years of writing, scribbling, 
I'm eye to eye with him, Uncle Dog, the poet at nine. First mud I ever wrote about, the garbage man's dog. Growing up in Chicago, a doing truckman's dog and not a simple child dog nor friend to man, but an uncle traveling into himself and a bitch at every second can. My first published poem, first book. Now I'm out of my ass. The charge? Muse neglect, dog betrayal. Truth is, maybe I had it coming. I let him slip away. Uncle Dog and I are looking at one another, and the dog is given notice. It's been 50 years since I wrote those lines. Sharp, high, fox-eared, curf-ford, truck face with his pick of the bones. So what's today's dream? Give me your paw, says Dog. Bad poet, bad poet. <laughs> <laughs> what a mess, and five marriages. All that scribbling, loss of nerve, cowardice. What'd you expect, what were you thinking? Yeah, I know, we had our day he says, and gives me back my hand, that it's like looking in the mirror, and the you in the mirror walks out on you, head up, dog wings outstretched, circling, climbing, ascends into heaven. Yes. I, hear, I hear a voice from everybody here. I, I hear your voice. Uh, and Hannah's idea was that we just you know, sit quietly and you know maybe a three or four minute meditation just on the ocean, on the joy of being here, on, on our breath. Colleen mentioned some of the shorter poems. Nightgown, wife's gown. Where do people go when they go to sleep? I envy them. I want to go there too. I am outside of them, married to them. Nightgown, wife's gown. Women that you look at beside them. I knock on their shoulder blades. Ask to be let in. It is forbidden. But you're my wife, I say. There's no reply. Arms around her, I caress her wings. Ode to Torpor. It's a, one that Gary Sinkeeler read in a, a while back on the radio. Glory be to God for the tiresome and tedious. Glory be to God for tedium, for no news about anything, for newspaper strikes and power outages, lethargy and downtime, Postpone and delay, and again, postpone and delay. No place to go, no way to get there, no reason not to stay. Glory be to God for inaction, for not getting things done, for not getting anything done. No huffing, no puffing, just some of that slow and easy. The woman lackadaisically on top, the man lackadaisically on top. Yummy, yummy, take your time. Yummy, yummy, I'll take mine. Slow and easy, slow and easy. Glory be to God. Oh, glory. Oh, glory be to God. <laughs> All for a day. All day I have written words. My subject has been that, words. And I'm wrong in the words. I burn three pages of them, words. And the moon, moonlight, that too, I burn. A poem remains, but in the words, in the words, in the fire that is now words. I eat the words that remain and am eaten by nothing, by all that I have not made. And I'd like to read that, uh, Colleen. I can? Sure, yeah, yeah. All for a day. All day I have written words. My subject has been that words, and I am wrong in the words. I burn three pages of them, words, and the moon, moonlight, that too I burn. A poem remains, but in the words, in the words, in the fire that is now words, I eat the words that remain, and am eaten by nothing, by all that I have not made. The poem that was referred to earlier, Iowa, um, it was my first experience, this is back in the 50s, of being in a community of poets 
having that excitement about uh, discovering the poetry and uh, some of a podiatrist in Chicago growing up, you know, this, this is a, a very different world and, and just the joys of, of writing. Um, so uh, you've heard it once, but I think I'd just like to read it maybe one more time. Iowa, what a strange happiness. Sixty poets have gone off drunken, weeping into the hills, I among them. There's no one of us who is not a fool. What is to be found there? What is the point in this? Someone scrawls six lines and says them. What a strange happiness. Yeah, I, th I think D David referred to that, but it was, uh, you know, that 75th anniversary in Iowa City at the University of, of the founding of the uh, poetry workshop. Um, as David said, they, they reviewed a number of pieces that were written about Iowa, and they, I guess they just liked it, that it was really quite quite distilled, so they made copies of this thing and circulated it. It's, it's such a joy being with you and just, you know, I don't know, just, you know. Personal stress assessment found home. Make a list of all the life events that apply to you, then add them up with the points assigned. I, I, I find poems, as other people do, people work with collages, and it's interesting what can come together. To be married, and moderately unhappy is less stressful than to be unmarried and male and over 30. <laughs> to be happily married counts for zero points. <laughs> if your spouse dies, that counts for 100 points. 63 for going to jail. 73 for divorce. Divorce is more stressful than imprisonment. Getting married is three points more stressful than being fired. Marital reconciliation, 45 points, and retirement also, 45 points, are only half as stressful as the death of your spouse. Minor violations of the law, 11 points. Trouble with the boss, 23. Christmas, 12. But sexual difficulties are less stressful than pregnancy, 40 points versus 39. Are you very happy and well-adjusted? Zero points. Very angry, depressed, or frustrated? 20 points. Conclusion, with 25 points or less, you will probably feel better if you reduce your stress. <laughs> <laughs> Another is uh, um, from something called the um, Urban Dictionary, which is an online reference base for, for street slang. And I looked up the word soul in Urban Dictionary. And uh, it has a, this poem has a little epigraph, English language, which hasn't gotten where it is by being pure. Soul, S-O-U-L. A word used to refer to people from whom you have no distance. Millhouse gave Bart five dollars for his soul on The Simpsons. Currently a commodity, consult a Satan for power or wealth. An intangible imprint of your body in a virtual world. The human mind, that is, that thinking thing lodged behind your eyes. All of someone's personality or what makes them unique. Also, the part of your body that lives on after you die. The musical elements of soul are influenced by the church. Gospel is an earlier version of soul. James Brown, godfather of soul. Aretha Franklin, queen of soul. Otis Redding, Ray Charles, Sam Cooke, Marvin Gaye. Until you know that life is interesting and find it so, you haven't found your soul. Having an outstanding aura with a brilliant and loving attitude. Put simply, one's ability to dance. Let me read just a few more. Um, this is One Stop Foot Shop. It's in my, in my father's voice. And he's speaking from the other side. <clears throat> we walk with angels and they are our feet. 
vibrating energy packets, he calls them, bundles of soul in a world of meat. Early warning system, dry skin and brittle nails, feelings of numbness and cold. These are symptoms, they mean something. I see things physicians miss. All you have to do is open your eyes, just open your eyes and you'll see. Seven-eighths of everything is invisible. A spirit inside the spirit. Your soul is rooted in the foot. And your friend Bly says, the soul longs to go down. Feet know the way to the other world. That world where people are awake. So do me a favor, dream me no dreams. A dreamer is someone who's asleep. You know, the material world is infinite, but boring infinite, he says, cigarette in hand, little wings fluttering at his ankles, and women, he says, smacking his head, four times as many foot problems as men. High heels are the culprit. I may be a podiatrist, but I know what I'm about. Feet. Feet don't lie, don't cheat, don't kiss ass. The truth is, people's feet are too good for them. <laughs> This is a goddess of the cracks. Just a tiny crack separates this world from the next, and you step over it every day. God is in the cracks. Foot propped up, nurse hovering, phone ringing. Relax and breathe from your heels. Now that's breathing. So tell me, have you enrolled yet? Enrolled in the Illinois College of Podiatry. Dad, I have a job, I teach. Ha, ah, well I'm a man of the lower extremities. Dad, I'm 43. So what? I'm 80. I knew you before you began wearing shoes. Too good for feet, he asked. I, me, mine. That's all I get from your poetry. Your words lack feet. Forget the mind. Mind is all over the place. There's no support. You want me to be proud of you? Be a footman. Here's what he says, handing me back my shoes. Try walking in these. Art support. Now there's a subject. Someday you'll write about art supports. <laughs> God turning 60, it's, it's what one does as one moves from one decade to the next decade uh, in one's life, going 39 to 40, 49 to 50, and so forth. So turning 60 was what one person went through when making that transition. Schopenhauer says, the first 40 years of life give us the text, the next 30 supply the commentary on it. Grammar as hymnal. So, grieving over this aging thing, um, turning to a book of grammar. Seeking solace in a review of grammar, I turned to Strunk and White's Elements of Style. Standing at attention, opening to the section on usage, I chanted and sang, uniting my voice with the voices of others, the vast chorus of the lovers of English. We sing a verb tense, past, present, and future. We sing the harmony of simple tenses, we lift our voice in praise of action words and the function of verb tense. We sing of grammar, which is our compass, providing, as it does, clues as to how we might navigate the future. At the same time, it illuminates the past. As a teacher, I talk. That's present. For 30 years as a teacher, I talked. That's past. It may only be part-time, but I will talk. That's future. Living the future perfect. Just another oh, eight lines or so. I will have invoked the muse. I will have remembered to give thanks, knowing our origins are in the invisible, and that we once possessed boundless energy, but we're formless, and that we are here to know the things of the heart through touching. I will have remembered, too, that there is only one thing we all possess equally, and that is our loneliness. I will have loved, you will have loved, we will have loved. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How to say this, but just uh, you know, the, the mind gets scrambled, but but the heart, you know, the heart knows where it's at, and um, I'm, I'm truly honored. I, I can't say how much by by your 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 turning out today, and that it's uh, been a very eventful eventful year for me. <laughs> you know, with the book and with uh, a number of ups and downs, and I'm, I'm sure. You guys can, can relate to that uh, also.